DX Mini. All digital mode hotspot. Today, Ham Radio 2.0. Hey, good afternoon. Uh, Merry Christmas time. It's getting there. A couple weeks away. My name is Jason. I'm KC5HWB. This is your first time here to join us. Please click on the subscribe button below so that you can keep up with all the videos that we post here on this channel that has everything and anything to do with amateur radio. Today uh, is another hot spot, and I'm getting to getting kind of adapt at doing these hot spots. But there's so many of them out there and so many good ones out there that... Um, uh, people contact me like, hey, there's another hotspot, there's another hotspot. And uh, sometimes I get them sent to me for, um, sometimes I purchase them, and sometimes I get them sent to me and asked to do a review uh, by the manufacturer, and that's the case for today. So the DX Mini hotspot is made by um, a gentleman right here in North Texas whose name is also Jason, not me. Um, I did get a call from a, from a customer one time and he started asking me questions about the hotspot, and I'm like, which one are you talking about? And he's like, the one that you make. And I'm like, I don't make a hotspot. I was like, oh, you're talking about the DX Mini. That's another Jason in North Texas. So, <laughs> Jason recently got a new call sign. His call sign used to be KG5UBV, but now he's W W9 something. I can't recall off the top of my head. Anyway, this is his website right here. Uh, it's just DXMini.com, and he's got two different... Um, Let's see, shop. He's got two different models. One that he calls just the DX Mini, which is this one on the right here, and then the DX Mini XL. So this is the, set my Fusion radio over here. This is the DX Mini, and it's got the screen, and this is a Pi Zero board in here. And then, of course, this is the XL, and it comes with a dual band uh, transceiver board. So it's a Pi Zero. You can see the screen here. Let me zoom in a bit. This information is on the screen, and it's there, and then when someone keys up and talks, I'm on System Fusion now. I do a lot of these videos, and I always talk about DMR. Uh, this one, I'm just doing System Fusion because I had it going. KC5 HWB testing on uh, the Texas Nexus room. So that should have come up there. And zoom back out here. And you see, and it says listening on the air right now. And it'll come back in a second. And it'll show that I'm on YSF. Somebody's coming back to me, but they're not in it very well. And then, of course, on the screen here, you know, this is just Pi Zero. I'm sorry, <laughs> Pi Zero. This is Pi Star, of course. You can see on the screen right here, this is where I keyed up. And I had a 3.8% loss rate, a uh, bit error rate, so... Um, might need to do some adjusting on that. You can go in and into the expert mode and do some adjusting. This is normal Pi Star stuff, you know. But the cool thing about this specific model, the XL model, is that, oh uh, yeah, let's log back into it. That, of course, it has a dual, what's called a full duplexing. Oops, no, that was right. I was... Yeah, there we go. Full duplexing transceiver board in it, so it can go into... So once we are... Okay, so we're going to go back in here. Yeah. Did a little bit of testing. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to change it off of YSF onto DMR mode. And if you look here, you've got a radio frequency down here in the general configuration, okay? So I'm going to change it to duplex repeater mode and apply changes. Now, duplex repeater mode is what you would use if you had just a regular Raspberry Pi or hotspot made up by DX Mini or any of the other hotspot manufacturers out there and you're actually attaching it to a repeater, okay? Um, but with this dual band transceiver card that some of these new ones that the the DX Mini XL have, and there's a couple of other other ones out there as well. So this is and and these are all running on Pi Star, so it's going to be very close to the same thing. 
depending on what version they're running and all that kind of good stuff. But it's going to come up here. Okay. And changes applied. Starting services. It's going to refresh. It's going to go back to... Let's go back to... Uh, no. Yeah, there we go. A little bit slow there, but that's okay. Uh, again, that's Pystar. And now we're in... Uh, DMR mode with duplex repeater set right here and now there's a transmit and a receive frequency on the screen so now you're gonna set your radio up not this is a fusion radio but you would set your DMR radio up here's a DMR radio the any tone DMR radio you'd set it up when you're creating your channels just like you would on a repeater so instead of being simplex on both transmit and receive and like I said, I usually set mine at 434.450, which is what this is at right here. It automatically did this offset. So if I wanted to go receive transmit, if I wanted to tra no, I don't want to go down that far. Let's do a uh, transmit. So let's do a minus 5 offset. Uh, 9.450. Uh, and then I'm going to apply changes here. So now, when I set up my... In fact, what you could do is you could even set it to the same frequency as an actual repeater. So that you can, if you're... You don't want to key up a repeater and a hotspot at the same time, so just be careful with that. Make sure you're not setting your hotspot frequency to match a local repeater. Maybe set it to match a repeater that's far, far away and you can't get to with an HT. And then you just use the same zone again. You say, I've got this zone I use on this repeater when I'm two or three towns over. I'm going to set my hotspot to that same offset frequency, and then I just use this same zone with all the same channels I've got programmed in it and go back to the hotspot. So, so that would be kind of fun. Uh, but, but then you can monitor dual time slots. Okay, so that, all that to say that once you do that, you can activate a talk group on time slot 1, and you can activate a ta talk group on time slot 2, and you can monitor both of them at the same time. And just like most hotspots, once you activate it, it's going to be active until you either A, key up another hotspot, or B, uh, hit it with uh, group call 4000, which disconnects everything. So now we've got here on the dashboard, you see TS, TS1 is enabled and TS2 is enabled. Prior to that, with a simplex hotspot, uh, TS2, TS1 would be disabled. It shows up in yellow, and TS2 would be enabled. So, in essence, this hotspot is a, is a true dual time slot repeater. Instead of actually having to have a repeater that's up high in the air, you've now got a hotspot that can monitor two time slots at the same time, and you can set it up however you want to. So, that is that. So, very cool stuff. This DX Mini right here, which is this XL model, once again, it's still got, it's got the Pi 3B, 3 plus B board, the latest one right now. Uh, with all the uh, accessories on it, you can hardline it. It's got four USB ports. It comes with a micro SD card, of course, uh, when you order it. And then it runs on just a standard micro USB or micro SD card, I should say. And then it runs on a standard micro USB connection right here. And the two antennas are SMA, antenna, SMA male antennas to SMA females. I'll show you what it looks like here. They're all mounted right here. It comes with the antennas, of course, and it's got those two ports on the top. So most likely what I'm going to do is take this thing and set it up on a create a new set of talk groups or new new zone for it probably. I'm going to set this thing right back there and it's going to be part of my background on Ham Radio 2.0 <laughs> from now on. I really like this one. It's um it's got these die cast metal cases. He's got his of course his logo in it right here. And this one is great. I used this one mobile the other day, and it, um, it's got two ports right here on it, two micro USB ports, and both of them power the device. And I asked him what the difference was, and he says, well, it's one of them, you can power it from either one, it doesn't matter. One of them is for future expansion that I haven't done anything with yet. So um, perhaps you can, he'll be adding stuff to it later. So that's kind of cool. But, uh, You've even got uh, some screw ports down there. You could mount the thing if you want to, but something like that would go really well in a vehicle, I think, because um, it's just small and lightweight. And then I can sit this one here 
in the shack and use it, um, you know, like I use everything else. So, special thanks to Jason, W9DXM. So, special thanks to Jason, W9DXM, formerly KG5UBV. <laughs> and uh, he is the one who designs, builds, and produces and sells these hotspots. And um, I talk to him on DMR regularly around here in the North Texas area. And, uh, in fact, he's a fellow uh, Kenwood NX5000 series radio owner. So, he shared his code plug with me for his 5800 UHF model radio that um, I've got right there, which I need to pick back up, update the firmware, and do some more videos on it. So uh, you're going to see that upcoming also. 73 guys, if you if um, this is your first time here to join us, like I said, please click on the subscribe button, which should be over there. Yeah, should be over there right now. <laughs> Depends on how I do it. Should be over there right now. Also, you can uh, ch choose a couple of other videos right here and uh, see more about hotspots and more about DMR and uh, follow me on YouTube. 73, see you next time.